Welcome back. I'm Chris Sloan, and today we have a very special guest, Paul Priest. Paul, you are a, an associate professor of political science. Yeah, that's correct. Would you like to talk to us about what it's like? To be an associate professor of political science? Yes. Uh, well, uh, it's a very interesting um, uh, job. My job is to uh, encourage people to be involved in their communities, involved in their lives, uh, to understand that democracies are not self-perpetuating, but in fact they don't work unless you work. And uh, try to get students and, and other people to realize that they can influence and affect their community, but they can't do that unless they're active. And you can be active as little as simply being informed, or you can be active uh, by uh, running for office or being involved in helping other people, uh, writing, publishing, teaching. Um, but it's a people-oriented uh, activity and uh, something that I enjoy a great deal. Yes, and on the subject of community and, and things of, of that nature, you are also involved with something called the American Democracy Project? American Democracy Project was started about 10 years ago. It's a, a collaboration between the New York Times and um, organization of state uh, and community uh, universities. Uh, and what it is, it's an, an attempt uh, to try to get people to understand civic engagement. Uh, not just on, but off campus as well. Uh, we do things, we bring uh, groups from off campus onto campus so campus and non-campus groups can talk to each other. During the elections, we bring um, candidates on campus to talk about uh, their issues. Um, w when Katrina happened, we had students and, and um, uh, newspaper people coming and talking about how to cover issues like that. And it, again, it, it's a study in how to create and develop a democratic activities. Uh, uh, people assume that democracy is a self-fulfilling activity. You know, whoops, you're democracy, that's it. But that isn't, that isn't true. Democracy has to be developed and nurtured. We tend to live in our own little ticky-tacky realities, especially with computers where you stare at the computer all day yeah. and, and you can really get disjointed from the rest of the world. And what we try to do is, is, is get people out of their comfort zones uh, to discuss and, uh, and look at issues because democracy is an activity. Uh, uh, it's something that you do. It's not something you just talk about. And so the American Democracy Project is in a, maybe two, three hundred colleges and universities around uh, the United States trying to get people to talk and discuss about issues of democracy, civic engagement. Uh, and we have a conference once a year where we bring people uh, from business, from, um, from professions, and from uh, the university, students, staff, um, uh, elected officials to talk to each other about issues that are important to all of us. All right. Now, let's rewind back a bit. It's the 60s, and yes. yes, and there's the civil rights movement going That's on. Right. You were involved with that somehow. Uh, I was indeed. Could you please like tell us how you were involved? What right. what happened? Well, I have to go back a little bit before the 60s to give All you right. some. I was born on the waterfront community in Buffalo, New York. Uh, there are African Americans, Native Americans, Hispanics, Jews, Roman Catholics. Yes. Um, it was a very poor neighborhood, and so I grew up uh, with a lot of non-dominant individuals, and that was my reality. And so I go to this college in the middle of the cornfields of Iowa, which is mostly all white folks, uh, which I wasn't used to being around. And so we had uh, um, Freedom Summer folks uh, uh, showed up, and wanted to talk about going down south to help African Americans uh, register to vote. Um, because historically uh, and legally, um, uh, we're based on racist um, assumptions. And the 60s was one of the first times to try to overcome that and, and create a democracy where we were all involved. And voting is a very central part of that. Uh, and state and local laws had been 
passed to keep African Americans and poor whites and some Native Americans from voting. And so the Civil Rights Movement in the South was recruiting college students from the North to go down to the South. Well, since I grew up in those neighborhoods, uh, those were my friends and, and, and my folks. And so it made perfect sense for me. And so I went down to Alabama and Mississippi for two summers and, and basically uh, um, encouraged and educated uh, African Americans on their rights and responsibilities and, and also to the, um, the folks that live down there, the elected and other officials, uh, that it's not a democracy unless everybody has a right to vote. And so I spent two summers down there working with Dr. King and Julian Bond. And, oh. and I brought Julian Bond to this campus a couple years ago um, as a way of saying uh, that unless we all can vote, none of us can vote. And democracy has always been a very important thing to me. Um, and civic engagement has always been very important to me. Uh, anybody who's been excluded, I want to hope to include because you can't have a democracy in which you have an inclusive democracy. Uh, you can't just have white male Protestants voting uh, when there are women, uh, there are African Americans, Native Americans, gays, lesbians, Muslims, Jews, all of whom are, have made this country the country that it is. And it's not fair for them not to be involved in creating, developing, and and um, maintaining. And so that's what the Civil Rights Movement was all about. And that was um, uh, a very important part of my growing up and, and very proud to say that it was, uh, it was uh, a very important part of my life and it's helped to structure uh, a lots of things in my life since then. And even today, uh, you, you're still making some impact on history. Uh, example, you were uh, part of the Obama campaign. I, actually, I started working with the Obama campaign long before he uh, <laughs> actually uh, became a candidate. When he was running uh, in the primary, um, I, was, I was the main volunteer along with the people like Cyrus Garrett who was working with the Obama campaign. I was one of the essential people um, to help uh, get his message across in Indiana. And then when he became the candidate, uh, again, uh, was the main volunteer along with people at Whitney Denton, who was actually from the Obama campaign. And then when Obama won Indiana for the first time in 44 years, and, and Wayne County was, was, was part of that, um, I, was one of the, I was one of the few people selected to go to Chicago uh, to help create the thing called uh, the OFA. Um, and, and that's the, now the organization in the White House um, uh, that, that's maintaining the 50-state reality that once Obama was elected uh, to keep our issues, our local issues alive. And I just got a phone call uh, a couple hours ago that the state uh, staff has been put into place um, and I've been asked to help coordinate uh, his visibility in the state in the first couple of days of May, either May 1st or May 2nd, but certainly the first week in May, uh, we'll be bringing the state coordinator to Richmond uh, to, talk to, the, to talk to volunteers, talk to people um, who want to help Obama uh, create a democracy which um, hasn't always been on the forefront. Um, and so, yes, I'm still very much involved, and that's probably one of the most essential things is helping to elect the first African-American uh, mm -hmm. in the history of the United States, which is something we're very proud of. Well, it has been extremely insightful for you coming on the show, and, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll be right back.